getting ready to do some uh, trimming back on the inside of the cheeks and you can see a pencil line here and it tapers back down to the end here and I'll use a flat one inch chisel to take out that material okay I got a nice sharp chisel here I just touched up and we're going to leave this back edge exactly the height that it already is that'll be where our wedge will sit and our blade will sit behind um, but this front corner down here this will taper from the back up this way and from here down to this this will be the low point Try to achieve a single flat plane all the way across here. And that's looking pretty close. Now, how critical is this? It's that it's perfectly flat and perfectly in one plane. Well, that's just personal preference. I'd kind of like things to be right. Um, if you don't have it exact, it's not going to stop chips from escaping the, the plane or shavings from getting out. It just won't look quite as professional or quite as well done. Sometimes I get a little ahead of myself, thinking I'm close to finished, and then I don't like it and have to go back and hit it with the chisel again. call that side done okay here you can see the shape where we started at this level and ran it down the angle at this level all along this abutment it's still a quarter inch from the bottom here um, that, that widens it out so we can get our fingers in there a little bit better next I'll cut out the eyes on both sides to make a little more clearance room in there for my fingers I've just penciled in a, an arc here that I'll use to kind of guide me to, to rough out the eye on this half and I put a, a mark down here about three quarters from the top to kind of give me a an idea of where it will come down to and I'll just kind of sneak up on it and uh, kind of see how it looks and just kind of uh, smooth it up from there I don't really have a gouge that's the right shape for this this one's a little tight but uh, it's about the only thing I use it for, so I hate to go out and buy a new one for 30 or 40 bucks just to do this. I've done all right so far, just uh, kind of winging it with a flat chisel and this uh, curved gouge. I'm not sure that this half inch flat chisel is not a better tool for this type of uh, shape. I'm going to stop there and, and start the other side and get them to match up and then see how it looks. And uh, there will be a little bit more move because I'll sand this and soften the transitions and try and get it looking a little bit like this one. I, I kind of like the wide open mouth on this one. Okay, there's the roughed in shape for the eyes. Um, I may work on them a little bit more, but they're sanded pretty smooth and they don't seem to have any bumps or gouges in them. Um, we'll just leave those until the rest of the plane is pretty well complete before I go back and touch them up again. I'm getting ready to dowel these two pieces together so I can start working on the beds and the faces and so forth. Um, I thought it was worth mentioning that the dowels that I'm using are turned on my lathe and these I didn't have any pieces of babinga to use so I just used some hard maple um, but they fit these holes really tight in fact that doesn't want to come out um, the holes are a little oversized I used a quarter inch end mill and they come out about 255 256 um, and that's exactly what these dowels are uh, they're a little bit tapered 
the last part of the end is a little tapered down by about two thousandths same thing on this end but this middle section here where it counts is about 255 or 256 so that when I put these two halves together they kind of snap together and there is absolutely no play or no movement between the two halves and that's kind of important because I want this thing when I start working this bed surface I want it to uh, stay in the same plane and not move around on me so uh, if you go buy hardware store dowels First off, they're going to be undersized. They're going to fit really sloppy in that hole. And even if they were the right size, they're not really round. So when you turn them on your lathe, they'll be perfectly round and a perfect fit. And if you get one a little too loose, throw it away and make another one. It doesn't cost much, just a little tiny bit of wood. So uh, this will make the whole process go a little smoother. After this was dialed together, I could see that my bed is pretty flush here and my front of my throat is pretty flush there but I'm a little bit high on this half about 10 or 12 thousandths and just the opposite on the bottom side it's on this half uh, so I'll just clean those two up and then everything should come into plane and, and look pretty good I decided to modify my my float a little bit uh, on the back of it it had a sharp square corner back here I beveled that off I don't know if you can see it very well um, this is a little this is 3 16 thick and it's, it's too thick to fit through the mouth opening when I get to the bottom of the plane there and on the original plane that I did that I was using just a minute ago uh, it was cutting a, a gouge in the in the wear at the front of the mouth and uh, hopefully this will be a little softer corner and it won't uh, won't do that and it'll go through the mouth opening a little easier when as I start to open it up before I put it back together and, and start working on the bed and so forth uh, I do need to remove this little chunk down in the corner here of the mouth where the uh, router bit was too too large diameter to go through that mouth opening so I think I'll just take a saw and cut it flush on both sides with the bed and with the abutment and then clean it out with a chisel. Peel that out of there. And I'll do the same thing to the other side and that'll give me a place for my float to travel out. Alright, I've got the plane uh, setting together. I've flattened the bed, I've flattened the front, I've sanded and uh, shaped and sanded the eyes. Uh, the mouth opening is just where the blade will just barely come through. It's a little too tight still, but once I flatten the bottom, that should solve that. Um, it's ready to glue together. Uh, once I do that, I'll need to uh, double check the flatness and make sure the blade still sits flat and that everything still lines up. Uh, once again, the dowels that I put in here are a real snug fit, so it shouldn't be able to move around when I glue it up. Uh, so I don't expect too much uh, extra work. After the glue cleanup, 
I uh, set the blade in there to make sure that that it still sits solid in there and there's no rocking or motion that's uh, going to cause me any problems when I build the wedge and put it in. So as long as that sits perfectly flat and tight on the bed, we should be good. Well, I've uh, glued up the block and I've cleaned off the excess glue and I've got my paper pattern that I'm going to just glue on top there to use, do my bandsaw cuts with. Um, this is the same shape that I used for this original plane. Well, I watered down some glue. And I'm just going to put a little bit on here, just enough to hold it in place while I saw it. Uh, I, when I do this out in my CAD program, I also lay the center line on there, and I can line that up where the two halves meet. It's a little hard to see, but uh, and that way I'll know I'm good and centered on my uh, where my blade opening is. So let's see if I can get this thing glued on. the girl